Hi, I'm Mayor Jay Tipsherini, and welcome to this edition of Chandler Inside and Out. Today, our guests in studio, we have two. Mark Helfritz, U.S. Census Bureau Manager. Hi. Thank you, Mark, for being in Chandler today. Sure. And Sam Andrea, City of Chandler Senior Management Analyst. Pleasure. Today, we're going to talk about all things and everything census. In the City of Chandler right now, obviously, we're going to be undertaking a mid-decade census. I think our audience is familiar with the census, but those are usually every 10 years, although here in the Valley, it seems like every five years we're doing a census because of our growth. But we are, in Chandler, going to be doing and getting ready to be underway on a mid-decade census, so special census. So, Mark, I guess my first question would be for you. Yeah. Explain how this spe a special census, this special, special census, is conducted. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And, uh, and you're uh, in from Denver. You I'm told in from me. Denver, yes. Good. So. Thanks for being here. Uh, you're welcome. Um, special census is conducted um, by a uh, methodology called update and enumerate. And basically, what we're doing is updating an address list that we have for the city. And we're adding and changing things uh, if we need to. We're deleting, we're adding new construction, which I think we'll find quite a bit of around here. And so what we do is we uh, canvass the neighborhood and make sure the address list is okay. And then we knock on the front door of the house. When the resident answers, we have a badge that looks similar to this that we'll show to them. And then we'll conduct a, a pretty simple seven question uh, questionnaire um, that's filled out for every person in the household. We'll also be doing some work with uh, group quarters, which is uh, college dormitories, prisons, nursing homes, those special situations where people live together. Mm -hmm. And we'll also go to transitory locations, such as a campground or an RV park. And if we determine that the person doesn't have a, a home elsewhere, mm -hmm. usual home elsewhere, we'll count them in the city of Chandler on that particular day. So those, those are the things we'll be uh, doing out there in the neighborhoods. Will it be every house door to door? Is that how, or it's yes, not sir. a sampling, it's every Every house. single house, yes. That's a major undertaking. Yeah, it is. It's, okay. That's why we're gearing up. A lot of people going to hit the field. Uh, we're, we're looking at probably uh, somewhere in close to 50 crews of people of about eight to 10 people in each crew uh, hitting the, on October 1st, hitting the ground and starting the process and knocking on doors. So, Mark, again for you, what kind of information will be collected by the census workers? Because you mentioned seven questions, basically. Yeah. And how does the government use that information that is gathered? Okay, the questions are uh, pretty simple questions. Name, um, gender, uh, race, uh, Hispanic origin. There's a couple of uh, household composition questions, whether they rent or have a mortgage. Uh, and, and that's pretty much the simple thing. The hardest thing is determining the usual residents. So I know here there's a lot of seasonal people and that could potentially, um, you know, they have to say that, yes, I believe Chandler is my home. And those are the kind of information we'll collect. We'll collect that for every person in the household. Okay. And then the government basically aggregates all the statistics and makes it a statistical um, uh, output that we give back to the city plus the certified counts. And uh, based on that, um, we, we parse out the person's name, we parse out the address information, anything that could be personally identifiable, we parse out and just put out the statistical uh, so that nobody can be right. uh, identified. We're not going to give any personal information. It's strictly Absolutely not. Uh, statistical information, That's nameless information yes. for the most part. Yes, sir. Good. We'll be back at you in here in a second. Okay. Sam, yes. uh, you've been at Ch City of Chandler. You work for us. You've been with us for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You're in the planning department. Yes, yes, I am. You're good yeah. with uh, GIS systems. You were um, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was actually uh, um, this was actually a great honor because most of the uh, I my experience has gone back to actually 2000 with working on the census. I've been with the city, like you said, for 15 years, and with that, um, I've always kind of been the person behind the census. Uh, whether it, uh, like Mark said earlier, whether it's uh, updating addresses, um, city limits, um, new annexations that I have to um, actually get back to the census so we do have accurate maps and addresses and streets to um, pull off the enumeration. So yes, I've been in, uh, involved in the census since 2000 and uh, this, was a, this was a great opportunity. Um, I was pulled forward to uh, kind of take the project lead on the special census and I jumped on it 
And uh, what else is nice, I've been able to work with a lot of other city departments and divisions, and I think we pulled together um, a great team to actually handle the uh, special census, uh, um, you know, coming up. So thanks for your enthusiasm. <laughs> so tell our audience, why is it important that everyone in our community, community participate in this census? Sure. Um, the last census was in uh, um, April of 2010. And uh, with the numbers that we received, um, obviously we have had growth since um, 2010. Um, state shared revenues is actually based on um, population totals um, throughout the United States. And obviously with the state shared revenues, um, that will allow us to provide better and more city services um, for our population and our, and, and our citizens. Um, on top of just not only the state shared revenues is also the planning. Um, as land becomes, um, you know, um, less available, it allows us as a community to kind of take the numbers, take the demographics, take um, everything associated with that and make better planning decisions down the road. So since 2010, and I don't know if you remember what our census number was in 2010, but Give us that and then maybe talk about what kind of growth you have anticipated and you think has happened since 2010. Sure. Um, our numbers came back in 2010 and it was just over 236,000. It was 236,326. Mm -hmm. um, with the building permits since, the building uh, residential uh, completion since for uh, multifamily, for residential, everything associated with that, um, we're looking at getting towards 250,000. So the numbers from 2010 to the present, it's approximately 14,000 14, new residents that have moved into Chandler. Um, so that's why we actually uh, went ahead and participated in the 2015 census. And um, also we're only one of other seven communities in the entire state that chose to participate in the special census. Yeah. Well, we saw that that growth, and that growth means more distributed revenues to the city. I know we get state shared revenue. Are there some f federal f formulas, too, that base it on population? There is some federals um, as well with that, and also some of the federal, um, not only the state shared revenues that comes with that, it's also some of the housing grants, some of the HUD programs, and everything else associated with that that actually is separate from the state shared revenues. And the key here is that we just want Chandler to get their fair share we have a certain population and we want to be reimbursed appropriately for that population. Exactly. And um, like I said, with the population growth that we've had, um, we will be able to do that um, with, a, um, you know, with an increase in our, in our population totals. Okay, good. Mark, so I know we had talked about the information kind of remains nameless. How do we and how does the Census Bureau ensure that the confidential information is, uh, is kept confidential? Okay. That's uh, something that we really, really take... Um, very seriously because there's a certain trust and if we break that trust mm -hmm. we won't be able to get those kind of answers and, and ask these questions. So the first thing we do is during the hiring process we do fingerprint everybody and send them through an FBI check to make sure that they don't have a criminal past or and that their um, record is clean and then we hire when we hire them everybody swears an oath of office that they will keep the uh, information confidential and that's not just for the length of this special census that's a lifetime commitment that they don't tell anybody about okay. the, uh, um, you know, the, what they've learned and what they've written down. We also are very uh, conscientious in the office, which uh, Chandler has provided us with an office for this. And uh, we have uh, locked cabinets where we're keeping everything in. The doors are locked. There's security cameras. There's all the different things so that, you know, we are very, very, very confident secure. that we are going to keep this stuff secure. And then with the statistical thing, like I mentioned earlier, right. you know, where, where, you know, I got you. I'm feeling comfortable with that too. Okay, I good. think you've got to get, um, how many part-time or temporary workers have you guys hired in Chandler? I know we went through a whole process of hiring folks. Mm -hmm. Do you know offhand? Yeah, we're, um, I don't have an exact number, but we're pushing 500, uh, or so with the, uh, people that we've selected and hired, you know, that includes the field operations supervisors, the crew leaders, and the enumerators that will actually knock on the doors. I think that underscores the, uh, the massive undertaking this right. is to do a census in a community like Chandler, who's mm -hmm. the fourth largest community in the state. So mm -hmm. it'll be uh, interesting. Now, I don't think we're, are we still hiring or is that pro part of the process? Um, we, we are going to, um, 
try to hire a few more people. We're going to open up uh, some more hiring in the next three days to see if we can get uh, because we want to put some people what we call replacement trainings, which next week is the start of the trainings. Okay. It takes about a week, yeah. three and a half days. And then we want to start again. I think it's October 5th, if I'm not mistaken, if that's the Monday there, then we're going to do another maybe 50 people or so Good. stuff because we, it's our goal to keep enough people in the field in the early part of the operation and then let attrition uh, take its course and, you know. And you touched on this earlier, but how do you account for visitors into the town and then maybe, a, and again, I think you touched on it briefly, but the homeless or the mm -hmm. transitory uh, population. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Well, I, um, with the transitory, it's it's really a self-response. Like if we go to an RV park, um, most of those people, would, you know, they may have a home and they're just temporarily out with their RV, or they may be doing that as a, you know, something where they don't really have a home anymore. That's right. their home now. And we will ask the, that question. We, it's up to us to determine by their self-response whether or not they uh, live in this uh city or not, or have a usual home elsewhere. As far as the homeless, um, we will probably just uh, go to the, the places that the soup kitchens, the service centers and stuff. And, right. and we try to do that in one day. So, because we know they're, they're pretty transitory and they move right. around. So we, try, we just try to have one uh, operation where we'll go do that. Yeah. Cause yeah. homeless people are, they're going to be accounted that they're living somewhere because mm -hmm. the whole idea about the census is is to count everybody that resides in the United States. So right. it's just where you allocate the residence of a homeless right. or transitory yeah. person. Yeah, with the seasonal, it gets a little bit more difficult, I think, because you know a lot of them come down for five or six months. You know, so really, it's six months plus one day. Where do you live? You know, six months plus one day. Where, where do you live most of the time? And we so. do it in Chandler, mainly more so in Sun Lakes, which is yeah. County Island, uh, but Chandler does have a a bit of Sun Lakes and all, mm -hmm. which is a retirement community, right. and also a retirement segment of our population, day, especially down in South Chandler. So the the, the de demarcation for that would be six months and one day. Yeah, you live exactly. in Minnesota or or, or, or wherever mm -hmm. North Dakota is for six months and one day, right? Or do you live in Chandler, Arizona, for six yeah. months? Then you're a resident of wh however you answer that That's question. Correct. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. the unit, the housing unit where they live, the resident, uh, it becomes vacant. It's yeah. classified as vacant. Okay. All right, good. Sam, we'll go back to you. Um, again, we've talked about uh, this is a financial consideration uh, also with the census. How much dollars could this mean with our growth in population? You estimated it, it could be another 14,000 people or so, I think. But what could that mean to the citizens and the residents in terms of dollars? into the city to put into services for them? Um, being allowed to update our population totals now instead of waiting until the 2020 census is, uh, we've, we've, got some, uh, we've got some projections and we're looking around $14 million over the next five years. Um, and when it's broken down per person, uh, the state shared revenues gets a little tricky to look at. But uh, most, for the most part, every person counted um, in the city of Chandler during this special census will amount to about three hundred and eighteen dollars per year, or per 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 person for the five into, years. Yes, into the five years. So about fourteen million dollars when it comes to fourteen. Yes, significant amount of money to yes, the city of Chandler. That will obviously go directly back to the city in city services, um, city projects, um, yeah. road maintenance, everything from books to fire trucks basically is what we're going to be able to do with that additional, uh, that additional money. And the pie isn't increasing, it's just that our proportion of the pie, because everything's based on population. So as you grow and other folks lo lose uh, their growth, it uh, enables us to be funded a little bit better to serve that growing population. Correct, and that's actually that was one of the uh, one of the reasons that we jumped on board, and one of the reasons that we're one out of seven communities in the entire state that chose to uh, to do the special census. Good, we'll be right back. I'm going to reintroduce the show. Don't go anywhere because it just okay. takes a second. Okay. I'm Mayor Jay Tipsher, and you're watching Chandler Inside and Out today. We're talking a little bit about the mid-decade census that we're undertaking, and that is very important to our citizens of Chandler. So again, thank Mark, thank you for coming in from right. Denver today, Sam. Thanks for walking over from planning today. We appreciate that. So uh, let's, um, some of the special challenges you think we're facing with the special census and the census count. What, 
What would you attribute some of those challenges? Um, some of the challenges that, um, that, that we actually have already had and that we're going to be uh, um, going into is the first one is with a special census, um, more responsibilities are actually put on the city. Uh, for instance, our recruitment. Um, during, a, during a regular decade census, mm -hmm. um, the Census Bureau handles most of that. Okay. Um, in this part, we had, a, uh, we, had a, we had a set number that we were trying to meet. And um, one of the challenges that, uh, that we ran into with our uh, human resources department and everything else, we have never done anything on a mass recruitment um, volume like this. We were looking up towards about 2,200 people to recruit for this process. Um, some of the larger recruitment processes that we have uh, done here with the city obviously has been with the fire, uh, the fire and the police recruitment. Right. And um, we pulled in the, uh, the correct people for this and I think we did a super job. Uh, we had to think outside the box a little bit on this one, and um, we uh, not only in print and radio and television and everything else uh, associated with the re recruitment process, um, our public information officers, our human resources people, we did think outside the box. Um, we were advertising for recruitment on bus shelters. Um, we also, um, in, um, in two Harkins theaters, kind of the pre-movie screening, right. we also had some recruitment there. We were trying to get as much volume out there as possible with this. And uh, actually quite a few people were able to have lunch with, uh, with you, Mayor, over at the uh, Chandler Fashion Center because you were on quite a few tables there at the food court. So ah. yeah, that was kind of interesting. That's good. That's good. So in 2005, did we have, when we did a mid-decade census then, did we have to do a recruitment then also? We did not. Uh, MAG actually took care of that, if right. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they they, they okay. basically, um, all the other communities did pitch in for the costs on that mm -hmm. um, um, with, their, uh, with their contributions. And then MAG basically took care of most of the, uh, um, most of the responsibilities and ch challenges dealing with that. So in your opinion, Sam, uh, in 2015, what kind of resources is the Census Bureau offering to the city to help to help in this? Um, I think some of the some of the biggest um, is probably having um, having the quality of people and the talent. A lot of these people that I've spoken to, from enumerators to crew leaders and um, such, some of these people have been involved with the census back to 1990. Um, some of them did participate in the 2000 2010, and actually. Um, quite a few of them just recently came off assignment for the uh, for the 2015 test census. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, the recruitment in order to keep the cost down for the cities, uh, the recruitment effort was really looking directly at people from within the community uh, for several reasons for keeping the cost down. And these are our neighbors. These are people. These are our citizens who are going to be uh, more excited and more driven to actually in this short amount of time. Um, get out there, perform the work, and um, you know, and mm -hmm. just kind of move everything forward as it should be because we are on kind of a tight schedule. We are on a tight schedule. How That's tight right. is that schedule? Um, well, actually, it began several months ago, but um, the first door to door will uh, uh, visit will begin on October first, and uh, the Census Bureau would like to wrap this up by November twenty fifth, yes. and that will give them enough time to take the data back and um, do what they need to do to get to make sure that we get our DES numbers, our total population numbers in, and then back to the DES by March 1st. Okay, we got a lot of work to do. Yes. Mark, just a question. So uh, in terms of practicality, you're out in the neighborhoods, your people are at work, they're not at home at day, whenever. Mm -hmm. What do you do when somebody's not at home or one of the people that occupy the house is home but the other person isn't home? Okay, um, if, if we usually just try to talk to the one person and get information for everybody okay. that's in the household. Okay. But if, if we knock on the door and nobody's home, um, we will leave a notice of visit and we'll put a phone number on there for them to call, uh, make an appointment, or and we'll try again multiple times to knock on that door. And, and uh, the biggest thing is, is we try to come in the evenings and Saturdays and Sundays when people have a tendency to be home. Yeah. And, and uh, that, that's a really important function is to, is to come in those hours and, and do that. But we will try, I believe it's up to six attempts, three uh, knocking on the door. And if we have phone information, we'll do three attempts there. If they call so, you back, can they do it on the phone or do you still want to come out there and do it personally? Uh, we would really like to do it in person. But if, we, if, if the only option is to do it on the phone, yes, we will do it on the phone.
yeah. with those. And yeah. th there's cases where people, you know, don't want somebody at their door. Right. And again, it doesn't take that long. Like you say, seven questions, it's five Ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're answering for both people. Yeah. So we're optimistic this is going to go well, right? I am. Good. <laughs> you guys, and this is a good question. I want to delve into this a little bit. You recently conducted a census test. I was part of that census test. Mm -hmm. They did some mail. You you right. responded. Mm -hmm. Also, somebody came out into the field. But what is the census testing that we did? Was it a success? And did people use the uh, website in dealing with that? Yeah. The, the first biggest thing was we were doing an internet response, and, and that was very, very successful. Um, there were parts of Chandler that had a very, very high response rate. And that was without a media campaign and without really letting everybody know like we would normally do in a decennial census. Um, we also tested routing for the first time, kind of like what UPS and others use, um, where we gave the uh, enumerator a set uh, um, route that they needed to go to, and we told them, uh, follow this. That's to cut the cost of the mileage and mm -hmm. other costs. And uh, enumerators, uh, bless them, they have a tendency to go too many times to a door, you know, yeah. and, and, and that just adds to cost. So that was a really important uh, thing. The Census Bureau wants to save $5 billion on the next census, and we think technology right. is the way to do this. Yeah. So Did everybody get that postcard? Because I remember I got it, I filled it, yes. I, I went online and I did it. Yeah. Did you then want to make sure everybody returned it? Or again, since it was a test, you didn't follow up with everybody or what have you? Because I do remember then somebody coming in the neighborhoods and and I was out in my yard, hey, who's what's going on here? I couldn't yeah. get a hold of anybody. So obviously they didn't get a postcard or, or done on the website. Now, everybody was supposed to get a postcard and that should have gone out to everybody. And, uh, you know, that, that had the information to do it on the website, you know, on, and to, to go. So everybody should have gotten a postcard. Or unless they had yeah. new people in the household that, that or what have you. Yeah. yeah, people do move. Because there was follow-up by folks, maybe for the folks that didn't, Right. The, the people who didn't respond and to the Internet, um, we, we knocked on their doors. That's traditional type of uh, census work, and that's what we did with that. But it's so. not a full count. That one is just, it was kind of testing for the future, like you say. Right. We did and a sample of, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Developing it, some techniques. All right. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. We we wanted to uh, do a sample of people. We didn't do the entire set. I think, Sam, you told me 50,000 Households in Chandler or something roughly got a postcard? Uh, or uh, The uh, census test area was about two-thirds of the city and mm. about roughly about 50,000 units, which is about half of our housing units that we okay. currently okay. have. Yeah. Okay. So, and and um, it, it's really important that we use the technologies out there, and, and we have a new operating system that allows us to route, and it allows us to do a, a few other things, and, and it's really where you know, important because that is our goal is to save uh, the taxpayer dollars this time around and, and it's getting more and more expensive. So we need to it find is. solutions to that. It's a very important service, but it's also very expensive. So yeah. I'm glad to hear the Census Bureau is working on cost saving ideas. Yeah. You were real involved, obviously, in the hiring of these 500 or so people that are going to work on our census. Talk a little bit about that process. I, I know that was a major undertaking because my staff kept telling me to promote this because we, <laughs> we need more people applying for these uh, jobs. Um, well, like I said earlier, we were given a number of, uh, uh, I believe it was 20, 2,200 people. And mm -hmm. that was just basically a, uh, um, uh, a pool of people. And as Mark said earlier, there will be some attrition. There will be mm -hmm. some people that uh, drop out for, for certain reasons. So um, we did get together. Um, we did put together a group for the, uh, we were not in charge of the hiring process. It was just the recruitment process. Um, so with that, obviously we went out, we thought outside the box. Like I said earlier, we did a, quite a bit of advertising. And I think um, we were in kind of unchartered territory because we've never hit anything this big before. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the city resources and the city team, I mean, they pulled together and it was, uh, I mean, it, it was challenging. But at the end, we did pull. Um, we didn't get quite close to the 2200, but we did get around 1500. And that is uh, basically, um, you know, going to be good enough to get the uh, to get the uh, process rolling. So, yeah, I'm very proud of the team that and everybody that was involved in this, everybody from our HR, um, HR people to our PIO to our to our neighborhood program people did a super job. Yeah. And I, there was a certain 
person that worked in our communications department, I think his name is Mr. Jim Phipps, who was constantly on me to promote this particular <laughs> program because we wanted people yes. to apply in that. We knew it. And so we did, and they did a good job in Kappa, and Jim did a good job. So we want to thank him for that. Yes. So a quick message. We only got a couple of minutes left. What about, and we talked, I think, a lot about the test. What do you say to folks who say, well, I did the test. Why do I now I have to do the census? What's the simple answer for that? Uh, the simple answer um, with the census test was a test, and uh, the, uh, the totals came back, the response came back, the information came back, and it was actually positive. So um, what we would like to get out now is this is going to benefit the entire community. By being allowed to update our population totals, this will, this will actually benefit our, our, our community for several years to come. And everything extra that we get in after the basically our last numbers, it will it will be spread back right out into the community. Great, good stuff, Mark. You again, you're out of Denver. Do you have a lot of these going on in your region, or is Arizona more prolific with doing mid-decade special censuses? I would imagine other high growth areas might be doing the same thing. Uh, it's, it's mainly Arizona, and I don't know all the state laws, but you know, but the way the, the state uh, laws are written here, that's why you know we, you can do a mid-decade census. But um, most of the work we do is in Arizona. Okay. Um, we do have one in South Dakota, you know, with some uh, growth, and we've done them in Wyoming. Chicago, Illinois, which is not in our region, but they do a, a lot of uh, special census. They yeah. also have legislation that, you know, Good. allows that to happen. Well, I want to thank you for coming out today. Thank you. Sam, for thanks for me. coming over from planning today. Thank you, man. Uh, it is important. I mean, I've been talking to our citizens, and it really gets down to knowing what our population is, but also getting our fair share of our tax dollars that we as residents mm -hmm. pay into the system back to us. So that's why it's so important and so critical that our citizens participate and that we get an accurate count so that we get our fair share of our tax dollars return to our city. So again, I want to thank both of you for being here today and we'll, we'll look for a successful census. I'm Mayor Jay Tipshire and you've been watching Chandler Inside and Out today, talking about the mid-decade special census underway in Chandler. We want to thank you for participating. Thank you for watching the show today. Until we see you again, take care and be safe.